So today is November 20th. Time is 7.30 p.m. It's very late. I'm reporting to you. It's raining outside. I cannot take my telescope out. This is a day after November 19th when NASA released the pictures. I have a lot of interesting stuff to share with you today. So please do watch the video till the end and please uh, click on the subscribe button and the notifications button. So whenever I post the new videos, you are going to get a notification. And this was the first picture they showed. Initially, I was quite impressed. Like how did they take this picture using the MRO, the Mars Reconnaissance Arbiter? Because the sensor is so big and this should have been like one pixel on the sensor. How did they were able to capture an image of this size? Then I started looking into the data. That image was produced by University of Arizona and the folks that published this is James Ray. So he published this yesterday, like 19th November. Today is 20th November, 2025. So yesterday after NASA broke the story and showed this image, immediately they released this press release and they said all image products are here and our cutout is derived from this product and i went to check the cutout and there are series of images that were given to us so these are the series of images yeah so here is where i was able to locate the comet 3i atlas it's like one pixel and they actually developed the image that we are looking at, this image that we were looking at, using that one tiny pixel. At some point of time, they came here and they were showing this image. So this image was taken by Hubble telescope. And I was thinking, I couldn't make anything out of that one pixel. So how do I look at this image and compare it to the images that I was taking which is showing all sorts of rotation. So how do I make sure that they may be seeing the rotation as well? Maybe they are just showing that as a comet image, but what if, if I look at this image differently? Went to the Hubble Space Telescope uh, archive and I was able to download the picture. So David is behind this picture. So he is the one who took the telescope time of Hubble and created uh, that picture. So they took four uh, pictures during that time. I think the four useful pictures, I would, I would call it. So they took this on July 21st. They definitely need to take more pictures because that's more promising than the MRO, right? The Mars Reconnaissance Arbiter. So on 7.21, they were looking at this picture. The exposure time, I believe it's probably 40 seconds. And it is 7.21 from 16.29.01 to 16.29.41. So Hubble took 40 seconds exposure on July 21st. So I went ahead and downloaded those pictures. I wanted to quickly show you so these are the pictures that you are looking at that were the raw pictures that were downloaded from Hubble. So and I opened one of them. I'll, I'll quickly show you one of those pictures. So this is the Hubble picture that it took uh, like four of these type of images it took. So this is the picture of that comet. So the one that we are looking at, the Comet 3 Atlas picture, the one that was shown, is this one. So it is bent like this and I think they applied some false color to it. Uh, and then I guess that's the picture that they took. There, there, are, there is a top portion and the bottom portion. It's like multiple sensors. So I started looking at only the top portion of the picture. So this is the top portion. There is a bottom portion too. So this one is the top portion that has that comet. Let me show you all the four pictures that 
I download it and I see that comet right there. You can see it is uh, moving. I believe it is going to jump here and there, but you can see that's the comet's picture that you are seeing in this picture. So, so far everything is good. We went to the Hubble website. We downloaded the picture. We were looking at what pictures NASA took. Other than saving it to a different version, these are the raw pictures. What I did was, I did a comet alignment process, which is going to, you know, that, that comet is swinging a little bit here and there. I wanted that to freeze. I wanted that to stay in one area so that I can carefully look at that comet. So I did, I was holding the comet even though the picture is shaking. So when I did that, that now the comet is not shaking anymore. It is just staying in one place. So earlier picture, if you saw, the comet was swinging a little bit back and forth. And now here you are seeing a lot more stable version of the comet. I do, I do see a little bit of rotation here but I don't, I don't want to confirm it by looking at this at this moment. I wanted to use the false color, like the, what NASA is showing. So that way we can compare this and this. I removed the noise and I put a false color. That's all the difference between the previous stack that you are looking at and this one. And when I did that, I got this picture. So let me zoom in and show you. So I zoomed in and I'm showing you, even if you're on cell phone, I hope you're able to see this clearly. So that's the picture. Do you see the rotation? It's anti-clockwise, right? When we were doing on our RASA 11, it was doing it this way. The reason for that was RASA, when it takes a picture, it's like upside down kind of thing. So you have to invert it. I didn't invert it when I was processing last time, but Hubble's picture was like, they are all perfect. So they were showing like basically a spin. I hope you all can see that spin when you're looking at it. So it's not that we were just looking at the spin in our pictures. Their pictures are also showing that the comet coma is actually spinning. Look at the difference between the presentation style of this and this. When somebody shows the pictures from a side and if they show like this, it looks like a comet. When you're seeing the picture like that way, it doesn't appear with a tail, it actually changes your perspective that a single picture won't tell you that story, right? Let me stop this. It, once you see it, you can't unsee it. But if you had seen this picture and moved it to the side, let me zoom out a little bit. And if I twist this um, and show you, I can show you the exact comet style looking picture, right? This is the same picture as this one. So. I believe they were showing this picture as these two streaks are here. This one single streak is here in the bottom. And these two are on the top. These are the two on the top. So this is both are the same identical pictures. Only difference now is we are seeing through the, we are seeing through the time lapse and the time lapse gives us a completely different perspective which is what I wanted to bring it to you. This, these are the comet images from Hubble taken back in July, 20, July 2025. And those images were also spinning. We just didn't see it that way. Do you see like a little bit of something in the front, like a structure in the top. So you see the one in the center here, probably that's the nucleus of this comet. And I got more curious. 
and I was looking at how does the nucleus look of this. So I went ahead and removed stars from this image. So this process is going to remove technically uh, the stars for us and we should be able to see. So this is what picture number one was looking like, right? So I can see like something here. So I got curious. I was like, let me understand what this is. I went ahead and added more light to it. So that way I can see what it is. Let me expand that and put it here as well. So that's what you are seeing on the hole there. So I'm assuming that when it is removing stars, which is a typical process, that it is going to remove the stars. We do that on pretty much on every astronomy picture whenever we are processing the stars. So it's not unusual that it is removing stars, but when it removed it, it was removing, let me compare and show you what I mean. So this and this, right? So this is the without stars and this is the stars. You see that? So this is, I'm moving it to the side so you can actually see. This is what it is. It's like removing the shirt uh, and showing you that what's inside. So what's inside is that. So the shape of the nucleus probably is looking like the one in the back. That's very interesting. So now you are seeing, I wanted to put these two side by side. You are seeing the comet and what's behind the comet. And if I put it back, it's going to look like that. And it is without this. So please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure that you are going to click on the notifications uh, button uh, so you can get notifications when I post the new videos. Thank you.